Hello everyone, Jacketing here with another Time Attack Rivals feature and this is, I think, goes without saying, one of the most technologically advanced active Time Attack cars out there in the moment, at least in North America. It's so advanced, it's so wild and we just had to talk to the man behind the whole project, Sasha behind Mountain Pass Performance, who is a PhD Racing sponsor. We love what you do with a row of Teslas. Very cool. Very, very awesome. We've even been part of it and we've experienced it and we think, you know, there's more to be had. But you want more power. Yeah, we do want more power. We'll talk more on that ne next time. But this is a center of focus. This is Kells. This is a 350Z that was a pro, pro race car at one point. Yep. It was and built actually in 2003 as a, as a, uh, Grand Am car. I was six. Yeah, you were six. <laughs> I was six. And uh, and then we bought in 2008 and did some Grand Am racing. Wow. And then quickly ran out of money doing that. Oh yeah, and racing is extraordinarily expensive it's as expensive. we pro as expensive. yeah pro level is horrible. <laughs> and then it lived a wonderful second life as an incredible time attack car. Oh, Alex behind the camera, who is CSCS, you know, former player and over there. Don't even mention it here, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Not even the Sasha. <laughs> the, the, the king of CSCS at this point. The God of CSCS. Oh, dear. But like, Alex tried chasing this car and he failed miserably. Oh, it's pretty miserable. <laughs> so this car has history and we just wanted to know all about it because it's hybrid, it's naturally aspirated to build and has all the fancy electronics because you work very close with Maltec as well. So yep. if you don't mind, we'll start at the front with the aero package. Okay, size. let's do it. So basically, the front end was designed by my friend who was a Mercedes Formula One aerodynamicist. It, he's a great guy and um, he helped really do a nice job with this kind of GT 300, 500 yeah. inspired design. Yeah. The idea was to keep it like a GT3 car, a little bit more aggressive, but not like a crazy time attack with the big wings and this. I agree. Wants yeah. to look clean and, and yeah. so we have a kind of an underwing more than a splitter. You can put some footage you can see underneath. It has some strakes and this and that. It's crazy. Yeah, it has. Um, Fenders with some nice louvers, kind of a Formula One style louvers there. And then the engine, it's a Jim Wolf technology. We've been working really closely together, building engines together for the last few years. And this is our kind of latest iteration, which is super high compression, almost 15 to one. Uh, it has no more cam timing. Oh. So it's that's deactivated because we have the hybrid system, so no need for the cam timing. So, so it's effectively like a VTEC killer kind of deal. It's almost like a VTEC killer. Massive cams, we, we got rid of that. This way we could fit bigger cams. Right. And um, yeah, man, what else can I say? We have individual throttle bodies that we've designed and we, we sold a couple sets of. Right. So it's really like a really... We've got headers we built, like right. really large. So it's, it's, it's like kind of a strung out, not your aspirated yeah, that's what engine, I mean. you know? Yeah, so right. it makes 530 horsepower on the at the wheels on just the engine. It has an X-Track, six-speed sequential paddle shifted gearbox. And in between those two, there's a, a Formula E hybrid electric motor uh, that we that replaces the clutch and flywheel. All right, stop right there, because that's that's kind of important in the middle. In the middle. It's so it's, it's a Formula E motor? Yeah, basically, yeah. And that's, it's, uh, as we from our previous conversation, it replaces the, the, the clutch and the flywheel. Yeah, so right now, the way that this car works, the engine is always permanently connected to the wheels. And to get right. the car to start moving, first you put it in neutral and run the engine and warm it up, get it at the temperature. Then you turn the engine off, you put it in gear, you turn the ignition on, and as soon as you press the gas pedal, it just starts driving. And it spins the engine, and it kind of lurches into life. Right, because we, we're paddock right next to you, so we, hear, we see cows moving in silent mode. And the next thing you know, the engine just boom, kicks in. And it is just the most crazy thing you see in the paddock, because it's silent and then it isn't. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. It sounds amazing too. It does sound amazing, because the high, high strong, is it still a, is it still a 3.5 or is it? 4.2. It's mostly <laughs> you stroke. You can make it that big? <laughs> yeah, it's mostly stroke, so. Wow. It, yeah, it's pretty. It's a pretty awesome engine, and it's nice to kind of uh, complement it with that hybrid system. Right. Since in time attack, of course, right. not just for is never enough. Right. So at least having another little bit, it's uh, it's nice. Does the EV uh, does the electric motor serve as kind of like the torque fill down low, or is it like kind of just everywhere? Because we have the sequential gearbox, like it's not such a big deal, right. but it does. Yes, it definitely does. We're limited on the torque by the gearbox. Right. So effectively, we cap it and we move the hybrid power to make it so that it's, the torque is capped. So that's most of the engine bay. Of course, we have other bits. We have motorsport wiring harness. Everything's really integrated. Small little package. We have tire temperature sensors, shock pots, Bosch ABS, drive-by wire. Right. Not to mention the 
ducting out the hood for as much. Yeah, it's kind of right now, it's just a temporary thing, but eventually we'll do like a nice carbon duct. Cause this is, this is really like just finished a couple of days ago. You guys shook it down and like a couple of days ago, just, just before. Yeah, so basically like this new build, we've got some weight reduction. The engine's new, but like fundamentally the same. Right. All the wiring harnesses are brand new but more or less the same as what we had before. So yeah, a lot like it's almost like a new car build. A lot of change, a lot has changed. Right. And I want to talk a little bit about the suspension because we saw a video of you guys changing the front springs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are KW competition four-way adjustable dampers, lots of knobs, and we've got these holes cut. So we're able to just pop the springs out the top here, which is nice for some quick spring swaps. And then these suspension arms were built by um, Unitech Racing, the guys that built these cars in 2003. Okay. So, so still some cool, uh, Right. history there for those guys and then the rest is all stock suspension links still with just spherical bearings is this still stock knuckle yep all stocks pickup points and everything wow we haven't gotten there yet wow <laughs> <laughs> and then and this thing already does a 52 around here that's, that's third lap in. third lap in. wild that's crazy and obviously on volks on your yeah, z40 12 inch z40s some pirelli slicks there we have stop tech brakes with a mountain pass uh rotor custom rotor that we did with that right, caliper right. Can we show off a little bit more of the interior? Sure, yeah. Walk us through, please, because we see yeah. a laptop, we see a lot of lot of buttons. Yes, and... the laptop's not normally in the car when I'm driving. Right. Wouldn't fit so well. Right. So basically, the electronics in this car is the thing you can't really see. Right. But that's where I've spent the most time. You know, I've done all the software that controls the hybrid system, the high voltage system, the whole cooling system that's involved with, the high, with that system. There's a rear steering, four wheel steering. Uh, Which we'll talk about in a second. We got to get to that. Paddle shift, traction control, ABS. So really quite complicated. Right. Um, and it's all controlled through one ECU. So one mm -hmm. control unit is running the engine. So and one Motec runs so everything. Motec does everything. Oh my God. The dash has display creator. So we're able to make custom displays. So right. this one you can see the rear steering. So I'm able to like check on it while I'm driving, make sure it's <laughs> doing what it should do. Right. We have different displays that show the tire temperatures. So I can see like uh, right video game yeah. style of the inside, oh. middle, outside of each tire. So really like, you know, in a Formula One car, you, you know, a game, you click the pages, a multifunctional display and yeah. everything shows different pages. Yeah. That's Since so we're cool. talking about this, like why all wheel steer? Or what's the, kind of the Like idea? historically, the um, front engine, front heavy cars, like Kels historically has been very front heavy. Before the hybrid, 53, 54% heavy. So when the car is balanced nicely on entry and mid corner, usually that results in a lot of oversteer especially if you have high power on exit. So the idea is, the main idea is to be able to add tow in when you have a lot of power. That's the main advantage. But then once you have rear steer, like I'm experimenting with now, there's all kinds of different tricks and things you can try. So far, I haven't found anything that makes the car better. Everything just makes the car more unstable and kind of sketchy. Um, but I think there will be a sweet spot there where, I mean, imagine when you align your car, usually you know, okay, if I do this, it's good in the middle of the corner. If I do this, it's good on entry. If I do this, it's good on exit. So we can do, we can change it all the time for different speeds, this and that. I just have to fine tune it to where the car is stable and not doing things that aren't quite kind of as smooth and, and um, ends up making you kind of scrubbing speed because you're moving around too much. Yeah, because this is a trial and error process, obviously. And it's the very first event that you guys have had. That we we did the four-year-old tires at TMP, which is a waste of time. So yeah. just sliding around everywhere. <laughs> so this TMP. is the first three laps we've done on good tires. And it is already leaps and bounds better than what it was at, at TMP right. because this car just doesn't work on old tires. It just kind of skates around on the rear, on the rear sliding door. Um, so it's close now. I think if we just do a little bit more fine tuning, we'll have a good starting point. Yeah, and we'll show a clip of the rear steer in action. Like the so way it does that under braking is, yeah. I, I want that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's just one small feature of it, right? Yeah, like the way that it's doing that under braking is, that's on a table based on speed. So that's only doing that here as we're stopped. Right. When you're on the racetrack, it has a totally different yeah. effect. Uh, so you basically have to map what you want the rear steer to do. The rear steer has like, uh, it has about 50 different parameters you can tune. Steering angle, yeah. G-force, <laughs> speed, brake pressure, how fast it can tow in, how fast it can tow out, knowing based on the phase of the corner. So there's like a lot of stages to the system. It's wow. not just simply one table. It's not just brake pressure to... to no, 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 yeah, no, that's no, just no, like no. a testing yeah, mode. Test mode. Yeah. yeah to make sure it's working uh before we drive yeah but the yeah. fact is having yeah. one yeah. control unit controlling yeah. everything so That's kind of the integration part. is yeah. the more impressive the integration the exactly time consuming is. part the integration is really cool because it's one control unit that does so many different things and we have to be conscious of 
Also, actually no motorized how much CPU we use because the ECU is like at the limit of what it can do because we're doing so much. So we have to slow down some functions and really be conscious of that. So it's wow. uh, so even if that's kind of approaching what the ECU can, yeah. like we're computing kind of, power wise. We're at the limit of computing power. It's uh, crazy. Yeah. So at some point, Alex needs to build a desktop computer for my ECU. <laughs> well, basically it's like, okay, now we're passing things off to the dash. So the yeah. higher temperature sensors and these things are only being in the dash. Uh, and the ECU doesn't have to worry about shock pots and those types of things. Right. So I, I do have, have a question, because it's an EV. You have to have a battery pack. Yeah. What sort of battery setup? It's, it's not probably not a capacitor. It's not no, but when, when, where is it located in the, the car? The battery is right here. You can see it through this window. Oh, that's the air, air duct for it. And it's a BMW i8 battery cells that we've reconfigured to fit in that space. Um, and we're going to make our own high voltage custom batteries that's going to be better suited to this application. And so with the higher voltage battery and high, like uh, the battery setup, I'm really bad with the WE by the way. Yeah. With, with better battery, does that mean you can output the, ba uh, the electric electricity better? And such basically yes uh, effectively like higher voltage means yeah. you can make the same power with less current and so long story short that means everything can be smaller and lighter so right now at 400 volts if we go to 600 volts we'll be able to get more power without any weight right. effectively so you can take a look at the other side you can see some of the high voltage components please because I think what I have to I have to really like hit home is a lot of time attack cars these days they strip away the integration part and they say, all right, let's make it as basic as possible, right? Yeah, but that's good. I mean, the, the best theory is yeah. keep it simple, stupid. But what yes. we're doing here is, my, is our business. And this is kind of like, instead of just being a time attack car, it's a rolling laboratory. Yeah, it's a tech, de it's a tech exactly. demo and learning. So we're learning yeah. and experiencing and getting all this knowledge. So would I have done these things if I was going for outright lap time only? I don't think so. Right. I would have put two turbos on it. I would have made it as light as possible. Yeah. And I would have focused on Getting in terms of school people. Right. Um, but this is like a really cool, exciting, different approach. And it's not as fast, heavier. Right. But it's got that natural aspirated sound. It's got all this integration stuff, and you're mapping and changing, and like there's all this, these uh, like nerding out you can do. Right. right. And while, while Sasha opens the door, you know, like, this car is fighting for overall win right now with James Houghton driving a Mitsubishi Evo. Yeah. And that's very much the old school approach. So I'm like, Biggest turbo you can find on a built motor, all wheel drive, stop slicks on it. Biggest stop, arrow. Biggest arrow you can find and then go, right? And I think I gravitate towards this more because this is pushing in a new direction. You're not just getting a chassis, gut everything out, and then that same old, you know, like the turbo. Like it's a surgical knife, big ass hammer. Yes, that's the exactly thing the about this car, though, you gotta remember it's like surgical knife, but with a chassis that's been crashed five times. <laughs> so it also has all this history. Yeah. So right. that's kind of cool because like this car has been thrashed. It's made into rocks. It's I've crashed it multiple times. You know, it's just got so much history. And then so it's, it's nice to, instead of starting from a clean slate and starting brand new, it's kind of nice to just yeah, it's, it's, it's like your forever car. You know? Yeah, well, I don't know if I'd say that, but <laughs> at least it's very cool to be doing this learning with right. the with this platform. If you so could, like high voltage. Inside here, yeah, we can't open the door too well, much because we're into the trailer. The orange cables, as we know, is is uh, you don't you don't touch those. I think when we learned on Tesla, if you see orange cables and warning signs, stay the fuck away from that or you die. No, you'll be fine. So there's a green light here, and this basically means the car is detecting that the high voltage is isolated and safe. Okay. Uh, if this is red, it means that the system is active, but it's still safe. You can't touch it and get electrocuted. Right. If it starts flashing red and yellow, then it means the system's detected that the high voltage is leaking to the chassis ground. So there's a chance of getting shocked. So there's a in the system is also part of the what we have going on with the ECU, but there's all this battery management control to make sure that the car is safe and keeping track of if there's a an electrocution risk. So right. you can touch any orange cable you want as long as the screen lights on. <laughs> Just I, well, don't I have, cut it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a question also, it's kind of like slightly separate, but you know when in like Le Mans these days, some Le Mans hypercars and when someone has a, like a problem in the car and they tell them you have to stop and you have to jump, you literally leap off the chassis and then uh -huh. land both feet uh -huh. on the ground. Uh -huh. I haven't seen that, but that would be an isolation problem. Right. So basically the idea is you're in your insulated seat, you have your rubber shoes on, like you're, you're probably not touching too much car because carbon's conductive to electricity right. slightly. So the idea is that they're saying is that we think that there might be an isolation breakdown, like maybe you've crashed and the battery cables on the chassis. Yeah. So jump out of the car so that hopefully if it is electrified, you're not going to get a shock. 
would, would be my presumption of what that is. That's, yeah. It's also really high voltage if you think of it. They're like a thousand, they're high, much higher voltage, so yes, it's a, the higher the voltage is, the more risky it is. So here you have an inverter at the bottom. On top of that, you have a DC DC converter, and that DC DC converter is the same one you'll find in a Red Bull Formula One car. <laughs> <laughs> um, I spent way too much money on that thing, but it's so cool. The old one was about 10 times the size and 10 times the weight. That thing weighs like a pound and a half. That's crazy. So it was just really one of those things to just, why not? I don't know. <laughs> uh, and then we've got the, the other things you're used to seeing, like a paddle shift compressor, right. air tank, PDM for the power distribution for the electronics, ECUs up there. So yeah, it's just nicely tucked in. And then we also at the back here have this power distribution module that you see the high voltage cables coming out of and basically that connects the battery on one side has two big switches and distributes the power to the rest of the high voltage system. So yeah, it's all nicely tucked in the middle so I can pump the wall really hard and hopefully the electricity stays inside. <laughs> Alex knows this behind the camera. I've been having ideas of, okay, what if I just somehow forget a way to get, get a super hybrid system in the super because the ZFA, it's not so simple. It really isn't. It really isn't. There's a lot that goes into it. But we haven't know, gave up on the idea yet. We'll, we'll work out. Yeah. So basically, like this is what part of it is like. Do we offer like what level? Because this is the whole new industry. Is you can't right. just say here's the wiring harness and the parts. Go figure it out. It's no one has that experience yet to do it. Yeah. So it requires us as Motec basically going to dealers and training them up and having them do projects and then yeah. building that up so that then we can offer a product that people can use to do these kinds of projects yeah. that you're talking about. Right. And I think that's why I love this car so much. Oh, I love the car. Because it's it's bleeding edge. It's the bleeding edge of bleeding edge of like oh, aftermarket can do, you know, in terms of, you know, not necessarily quite OEM inter integration and such. And you're not just buying a hybrid car and racing it. You're turning a regular car into a hybrid and make it re really, really work on the track. Yeah, it's truly at the level of like a professionally built yeah. hybrid electric race car. It has all of the same systems and, and, and yeah. software in place as those cars. Yeah. The difference is it doesn't have a lot of the running and the fine, like the, we haven't gotten to that point yet because it's still new. Yeah. But um, yeah, like comes the software time, the and those types of things, yeah. quite, it's quite close, I believe. That's cool. Yeah, so like, the back of the car we have, titanium exhaust, same diffuser as Will Civic. We just asked Will to just pop another one out of the mold for us. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> not quite the right size. Uh, we have a, a rear cooler in, the, in this area here that cools the hybrid system. Ah. And um, this is this the same fuel port? For this us. is the same fuel port from Grand Am. We just kept it. It doesn't need to be there, but it's just historical. It is. Oh, it that is. was a good scene. Uh, yeah, DJ engineering wing here. And uh, the rear steering, of course. The rest of the suspension is pretty conventional. Yeah. There's, there That's Kels for you guys. Yeah. It's, it's a really nice blend of old school, but a bleeding edge tech. I think that's what, in a lot of ways, time tech should be about. You know, it's not necessarily just who can fit the biggest turbo and the most amount of horsepower in the lightest package. It's who can think about, who can think of ways to go fast in the, not the time weirdest. Time is whatever, you, that's why I like time tech, do whatever you want. It's freedom. Yeah. You're, you're allowed to have things like this I and, and I, I appreciate it. Yeah, I don't like uh, these IMSA type spec, I shouldn't say IMSA, but these GT4, GT3 series yeah. where you, you're told what you, what you, have, you to have, run. have to buy. You have to run this. And you have to use all these parts. And you can't do that like Can Am. You know, I don't know if you know, you were probably like minus 20 years old when you got Can Am cars were those wild, like oh, yeah. the early the prototype. Th early cars. fan cars and such. For yeah, the GTP. Like the, yeah, those, yeah. So those wild cars. And that's kind of yeah. what this spirit of this. And it's cool to do it here at Gridlight because it's like a Circuit Legends event. And it's kind of about these types of Legends. cars of history that, uh, yeah. that are doing kind of cool things. Stuff. That's so, amazing. Yeah, awesome that they asked us to do something else here. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for your guys. time. This is, I think up there is one of my favorites out there. It's so cool. It's so, <laughs> I, 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 I don't have words for it.